If you've had time to play with software-defined radio at all, one of the first things you probably did was look at your local broadcast FM radio bands. These are all pretty basic. It's about 200 kilohertz wide of analog, frequency-modulated audio, and that's really all there is to it. As we scroll around here, though, we may run into something a little unique. Today on Signals Everywhere, we're talking about HD radio and some of the software available to decode it. Let's jump right in. If you're interested in software-defined radio and radio communications in general, please be sure to smack that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future content. Before we jump into decoding these NRSC5 or HD radio signals, I wanted to show you real quick how I kind of came across the inspiration for this video. We had a big event recently this weekend, and I wanted to listen for new or interesting two-way communications in my local area. While doing so, I did something that probably anyone who's ever owned an SDR has done, and that's swing my radio up and down the broadcast FM band. The most interesting signal we see here is at 104.7 MHz. This signal happens to belong to WKKY, an FM country radio station broadcasting out of my general area. At its core, this radio station is no different than any other. It's an analog, frequency-modulated signal. You may see these signals at different bandwidths, but this one in particular happens to be 200 kHz wide. The difference is striking and obvious. We have two digital sidebands along each side of our analog FM signal. We have our digital upper sideband and our digital lower sideband bringing our total up to about 400 kilohertz of bandwidth for an HD radio station. These HD radio stations are intended to provide a higher quality digital audio version of the analog stream and even allows it to flip back and forth seamlessly, assuming you have the right receiver, between the digital and analog version of the radio station depending on signal conditions. There are quite a few different things that can exist on these digital sidebands, so before we hop into how to decode some of that information, I wanted to kind of show you the other stations that had popped up on me. See, I was used to seeing something at 104.7 MHz, but I was also beginning to see them elsewhere, too. I found one at 107.9 that apparently had recently upgraded, and I hadn't uh, realized it until now. There was also another station at 81.9 MHz, although this one was a little odd. It was mostly just the upper sideband. The lower sideband had substantially less power, and I'm not even sure if I was able to receive it in full. I figured since I hadn't talked about these HD radio stations before, it would probably make a great topic for a video, so I wanted to give it a go and see what you guys thought. Let's jump into the decoder. This is an application called NRSC5, and I'll put links in the description below. But essentially, you open it up and you type in the frequency you wish to listen to, and then the audio stream you want to pull up. In this case, Audio Stream 0 is a digital version of the audio currently playing on said radio station. We can also see if we zoom into the text here, various information about the radio station as the digital audio is played. I have to say the digital audio is quite an upgrade over its analog counterpart, but I'll leave that for your ears to decide. Look who decided to show up on a Monday. What's happening? I'm Nikki, taking over the station. Participating Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers. Limit two prepaid cards per household. HD radio stations may have multiple streams of audio, so we can reopen our application and ask for stream number one over the default of stream zero. In this case, we don't get any audio, but instead are able to see more detailed information regarding the FCC details of this particular radio station. Assuming the HD radio station in your area happens to be run by iHeartRadio, it's likely using the protocol supported by the HDFM Python application. This application is meant to decode data from the HD radio sidebands. In this case, it's used for traffic data as well as radar maps, and these are generally displayed within high-end stereo head units within your vehicle. However, unfortunately for me, I do not have such a station in my local area. While I'm not able to discern the radar map or traffic data, I am able to see some of the more common data uh, being pulled from the radio station, such as the current artist, track, slogan of the station, and of course the bitrate that is currently able to stream audio from it. Let's head over to one of the more interesting radio stations in my area. This is 107.9 FM, a local R&B and hip-hop radio station. 
Now, if we take a look at the text information showing up on our display here, you'll see that it's actually playing a copyrighted song at the moment, so I'm not able to play that audio for you. However, what makes this station so interesting is that on stream one, or the alternate stream, Unlike some of the other stations in my area, it is actually playing in an entirely different radio station on Stream 1. So let's switch over there and see what we can find. It's no contest. Every day, people tempt fate and die trespassing on railroad tracks. Now that we've heard a little bit of stream number one, we can find out that it's actually a simulcast station of WERE 1490 AM. This is an AM radio station that I wasn't able to hear in my local area otherwise. Uh, this is actually simulcasted, or in other words, being replayed digitally at the same time it's being broadcast in AM. So at 1490 AM, they're taking that same audio from the studio and then digitally retransmitting it on 107.9 FM using one of the digital sidebands and placing it as stream number one, allowing anyone with a high definition radio receiver to listen to an AM station that otherwise they likely would not have been able to. It really shows you how far technology is coming and I can't wait to see what we'll be able to do with it in the very near future. Links to everything we've done in this video can be found in the description below. And I want to give a huge shout out and thank you not only to my subscribers, but my patrons as well. Uh, especially through these hard times here, I know it's taken quite a while to get out a new video. So I appreciate all of you taking the time and sticking with me through it. I can't wait to get moving forward again and continue to make great videos for you guys. And we can all learn together as a community. So thanks a bit. Yep, there we go. Well, that's going in the video. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.